I built a Michael Bay machine in my backyard. There's no way this is gonna work. There's no way this is gonna... <gasps> it worked. This is Orbit. This is what it looks like normally. You mount it to your ceiling, and it makes over-the-top, super cinematic, um circles. And this is what it looks like when you add the new cinema arm attachment that allows you to slide any length speed rail through the bottom. Yeah, so we ran out of room. We got to take this outside. Jeez Louise, this thing is just ripping by. We'll do some cinematic poses. This is the cinema arm kit. One person set it up in 30 minutes. It attaches to a slack line between two trees. It can hold a camera and lens payload up to 45 pounds. The shots are vibration free, even with a long lens. And the parallax, well, let's just say the parallax would make even Michael Bay proud. So we're in my backyard. I got a nice big tall ladder over there. I got two solid trees, one here, one there. And then this is just an ordinary slack line that I got off uh, eBay. This is a, I think it's like a 50 foot, but we're gonna double it up with another slack line and we're gonna go about a hundred feet. That way you don't even really see the trees at all. It's just kind of invisible. Now the slack line will be super tight, but because of the total payload and the distance spanning the two trees, I'm banking on a several foot drop. The ladder is about 10 feet. So each side is mounted about 13 feet off the ground. So I just took the outdoor bracket and I just threaded the slack line through the bottom here. Then I'll just mount the orbit motor right through there like normal. Now the outdoor brackets come with the pro kit and up until this point, the function they served is to mount in three spots, one on each of the light stands and then one in the middle. Now to do this configuration, you need all three. But when we use a slack line, you only need one. Now the slack line solves two issues. Number one, having to buy and transport large light stands. And number two, physically seeing the light stands in shots every time you do 180 degrees. Now I found some creative ways to hide the stands like hi uh, hiding. Hmm. Here are our background actors. We just want to be carrying on having a normal conversation. Just try not to bump any part of this. Best case scenario is if the light stand is, <laughs> is, the, is the last thing that you could possibly look at. But the best case scenario is to eliminate them altogether. And the best part is with the slack line between trees, we can make the orbit arm as long as we want. So in the past, what I've done is I've attached the motor and the rod, and then I tighten the slack line and I bring it all the way up. That way I don't need a ladder for the middle part. But this time I wanna test doing it the other way. We're gonna climb up and then mount the items up there. So I got my camera with the, uh, well, this is a 35. This probably is gonna be too wide. I want an 85. Instead of mounting it to the hot shoe, like we do with the indoor set, I'm actually gonna mount it to the lens. That way it's a little bit more balanced. By adjusting this knob, I can turn the lens mount upside down, which is perfect. Right down the middle, so it's balanced. Then we have the new attachment piece. This slides onto the speed rail, and it's a cheese plate. Dual ball friction clamp. So we got a 25 pound counterweight with a speed rail attachment. I'm not sure how much weight the motor will hold, but I have tested it. It's held my weight, so about 200 pounds <laughs> without pulling the bearings out of the motor. So that's a good sign. Now setting this part up with two people would be a lot easier, but the technique I found was mount the camera to the pole, rest it on the ground, and then put the counterweight on where the speed rail slides into the orbit motor, those screws are loose. I'm gonna slide and shimmy until they're perfectly balanced. That way I can get the absolute max distance for that camera. And then I'll tighten them down when it's like perfectly balanced. Now we don't wanna see any part of the counterweight in the opposite shot. So I'm gonna rotate this up out of the way and then lock that down. So the arm is so long that it's gonna whack that tree if I don't slide it. So I'm gonna slide the whole thing this way. Easier said than done. Now the one thing I should tell you about orbit is the longer the lens, 
right? It's set focus on the ball. The more cinematic it looks. And let's be honest, this shot kind of breaks my brain. is getting a little dangerous. This is looking better than I thought, but there's a few crucial things. Orbit on a slack line works as long as the load is perfectly balanced, the slack line is very tight, and we're not going top speed. With this six pound camera and lens payload extended about 18 feet from the center, we can go about five RPM, which is half of the orbit's top speed. Good morning. So the logical thing to do would be to decrease the weight, slow down the speed, but instead what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the weight, we're gonna make it a longer lens, the Sony 200 to 600, and see just how creamy that bokeh is. All right, and just to add even more weight, we're putting on an additional 15 pounds. This is really gonna test the limits of the slack line. If I had a tree that was 50 feet, I would definitely do 50 feet. I think 100 feet is just, it's, it's too much. What's interesting is the longer we make the arm and the tighter the focal length, the more the background compresses and the faster the orbit appears to go. So going slower at these longer lengths is actually a good thing because going fast might get distracting. Hi, kiddo. <laughs> Look at this. So as of this moment, I decided whenever my son interrupts my work, I'm going to show you guys. Yeah. These fleeting moments in time. If this isn't the main perk of working at home, I don't know what else is. Time for a break. Orbit is now even further down because of the additional weight. We put on a heavier lens and we also put on 15 pounds of sandbags. So we're looking at 70 pounds total that's orbiting around on the slack line. So definitely the slack line should be able to hold it, but we're gonna have to tighten it down a little bit more. Funny setting focus on here. It, all I can see is a giant set of testicles. We're gonna have to do something with that sandbag. So we definitely have the shadow to contend with here. So this is kind of neat. I'm actually watching myself wirelessly using the Monitor Plus app, which connects to the Wi-Fi of the A7S III or the FX3. Yeah, we got that. So maybe if I put up a giant scrim, that would work. All right, this is cool. Much more flat lighting. Let's give it a shot. So the motor definitely does not like to start it and stop it. It's too much. So keep in mind, every time I add more weight or length, the torque increases. So right now we're probably at the breaking point of this motor where the motor, um, you can't start it up at high speeds. You have to start it up at the very slowest speed and then work your way up, or you have to manually get it going and you also have to manually catch it and slow it down. And the reason I can hear the motor clicking, so it's, it's trying to do it, but it's, it's not, it doesn't have enough voltage to do it. It could probably do it if it was plugged in, but right now we're just off battery. So, I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of weight. Like try holding up a broomstick with just at the very end of it and turning it. It's a lot of leverage to do. Wow, that is insanely tight framing. So I, I can't move at all. My face has to be stationary. But once it's up to speed, it's working. So we are at 600 millimeters and dead center. Jeez Louise, this thing is just ripping by. Do some cinematic poses. See, I need a product or something. All right, let's change it to 240 frames per second. All right, so I think it's easier if I just uh, try to catch the camera. That looks insanely rad. Whoa.
two things. One, let's try to go even longer. And to do that, I got an extension rod for the speed rail. So now we can join two pieces of speed rail together. Now I have the 22 foot speed rail, but I also have another 13 foot speed rail. So that should be just enough to get the orbit arm out even further and we're gonna mount a 500 millimeter Tokina F8. Second thing. Right. So this adapter I got online for a few bucks and I should note that speed rail is only manufactured in 20 foot sections. We're gonna lengthen the rod. We're gonna scoot the camera back as far as we can. We're gonna try to counterweight it even more and using a lighter camera and lens, we should be able to get this thing out about 22 feet. While the adapter is made from steel, being able to hold weight horizontally is just not possible without some extra support. This episode, we're gonna test this to failure. We wanna see how far we can realistically put this on the slack line. So we have a 20 foot section and a 13 foot section now joined, which gives us a total diameter of 33 feet. I plan to make the camera side around 20 three feet long so we'll need to add even more counterweight than before all right so here's the tokina 500 millimeter this was a loaner from bnh and i liked it so much after i tested it that i bought it and so now we're gonna throw it on the orbit but look at this funny lens this is such an interesting design have you ever seen a lens like this this looks more like a satellite dish not even a lens what the hell this thing's almost level and look how much this bar is bending. But you can see right here the little kink. This is gonna work, I can feel it. I have to somehow strengthen the rod so that it pulls it up, it's not bending as much. All right, I got it. Power of triangles. So engineers love using triangles when building trusses or bridges because the inherent strength and rigidity. If I ratchet strap the end of the camera side to the middle and I put a one foot extension rod between it, I can ratchet strap the camera side higher without adding much weight. Straightened out that bar. Look how straight that bar is. It's actually bending the opposite way. There's a little kink there, but I think that'll be fine. Now, one thing I should tell you is this lens has the ugliest bokeh you've ever seen in your entire life. I think we're doing like two and a half RPM. It's going so slow, so slow, but it looks like it's just ripping by. Look how slow. <laughs> take it up to like 5 rpm this is the reflex lens essentially this is like a telescope it uses mirrors on the inside and that's why you see all this bokeh and it has all this <laughs> million donuts it looks god awful it's a great lens super lightweight but man all right this is pretty wild this is 5 rpm and we're at 500 millimeters and we are just zipping around now this isn't exactly a michael bay device but i think it's pretty cinematic so given the orbit motor is still working at 33 foot diameter, I would say this is a total failure. I failed to fail beyond breaking point here. This is a 100% stable, usable shot. So I think I better make the Cinema XL kit with some suspension wires next, and we should probably test that as well. I think orbit being set up outside works, but I could also see this working in some sort of onset location where drilling overhead doesn't work like maybe a warehouse <laughs> oh no do i know anybody with a warehouse if you're interested in getting the cinema arm kit we're doing pre-orders on our website right now there's a minimum order that we have to place in order to manufacture them so it's going to be a little bit of a lead time but you can definitely order those now if you need an orbit we have some in stock on our website and also on bnh but if you message my business partner, John, tell him I want a hookup and he'll give you special pricing. Tell him Maker now sent you. Do it, mm -hmm. do it. I'm gonna be at NAB with Orbit and the new cinema arm attachment. You can come check it out at the Condor Blue booth. That's April 16th to 19th. I'm giving a talk at DJI on the 17th, so you can come check that out. If you guys are in town, come harass me. I'll be floating around. Anyway, guys, this is Josh Yo saying thank you very much. Go make some art.